And being aware of God, you endured pain while suffering unjustly. If you endured when you were beaten for doing wrong, what credit is that? But if you endure when you do right and suffer for it, you have God's approval. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you should follow in his steps. Jesus committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When Jesus was abused, he did not return abuse. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he endured himself to the one who judges justly. He bore our sins in his body on the cross, so that free from sins we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like the sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and the guardian of your souls. May God add a blessing to this reading. You may be seated. The scripture reminds me a lot, really a lot, about the, a mother figure. A person who does whatever is necessary yeah. so that her children can succeed. I believe that is true. Yeah. And this week I, I was reading a lot, as much as I could. I had some things going on. But when I was able to read, I read about this article in the Huffington Post about Mother's Day. And this article was written by An Antonia Blumberg, if you have a chance to go read it, it's really good. But she wrote about how Mother's Day began, and, the, uh, and all the customs of, of Mother's Day, and, and how the churches in the early days thought that mothers should be recognized, and so really it was the churches that first did Mother's Day. But finally, in 1914, a law was signed making uh, into law making this the 100th anniversary of Mother's Day. I did not know that. So 100th anniversary of celebrating mothers. And we probably, probably could go back to that. But it's actually the, the day of the law. So give yourselves a little hand. I want to salute all of you who, who are moms. And who are the mom figures for your children and for the children, not only your children, but other children in community because we know that it <coughs> takes a village to raise our children. Thank you for our moms. It's amazing to me that Jesus acted much like a mother as he took this motley crew. <laughs> The disciples. <laughs> and he shepherded them, and he taught them, and he charged them with the enormous task of, of forming a church and leading others to build community. It sounds like what many mothers have done in herstory. <laughs> <laughs> we are all called to be disciples, and sometimes I think we're a motley crew <laughs> that Jesus is trying to disciple and trying to teach and trying to shepherd and trying to mold us and charges us with this enormous task to build this church. It's not a one-person job, by the way. We all can make a difference, whether we're an official mom or not. And it's, it, was, it's, it reminds me that um, we all need to hear uh, this message. We all need to hear the message, what Peter, First Peter 2 tells us in, in this scripture. And the message is, don't fight back. Don't try to get even when people treat you wrong. 
Jesus was the example here. Imagine what he could have said and done to the soldiers on Good Friday. Wow. I never thought about that before, but, you know, if Jesus had the revenge blood in him, he could have done some serious things to the, to the soldiers. Or all the disciples who ran and hid when Jesus was arrested. He could have done something to the disciples. And what about the ones who killed him? But instead, instead he forgives the soldiers and he forgives the, the disciples, and after all, he tells Peter on you, Peter, I will build my church. And Judas was able to receive that communion without judgment. So let's be honest. It's not always easy to be like Jesus, is it? And we all have challenges. Every person from from the young person to the adult, maybe we ought to look at it this way. Revenge or repair? Revenge or repair? When we talk about revenge, we talk about people who hurt you. And when we talk about repair, we talk about the things that fix the hurt between you and the person who has hurt you. Repair is something that leads you to come to an agreement, hopefully not to hurt each other again. You know, there's a TV show called Revenge. How many of you watch it? Uh, I was watching it. It got a little bit out of control for me. But. Revenge. She's so obsessed. That's, I mean, that's the only way to put it. Obsessed with revenge. And, of course, that's the name of the show. But it's about getting even. There's another thing I thought of, you know. Sometimes I thought of, about, like, bullies who... When you're in school, a bully pushes you down kind of accidentally on purpose. <laughs> and when you go for re revenge, you actually bump into his lunch tray <laughs> accidentally on purpose. And then he gets revenge by wiping the spilled food on your face. And soon, you're both wrestling on the floor. And finally, what happens is you get sent to the principal's office. Nothing like that's ever happened to me. <laughs> me neither. <laughs> In this situation, nothing has been repaired for anyone. There are consequences to those actions. Now, as adults, we know what consequences are, and sometimes we pay them no mind, and we go ahead and we act out in silly, crazy behavior anyway. Anybody there? Anybody like that? Okay, didn't think so. <laughs> there is maybe a better alternative. Now, this got me to thinking of the movie The Karate Kid which tells the story of a boy who chose to learn karate. What happened to him is he was being beat up and bullied. And so he chose to, to do something about it and challenged the bully in a karate tournament. Now, this whole movie, you see the karate kid working on all this move. Now, if I was, if, you know, Stella, you could probably demonstrate some karate moves for us. And if the kids were here, they could definitely demonstrate some karate moves. And, you know, I think Justine's a black belt now. So, you know, we have some folks but that know karate. I mean, 
mean, but it takes work. Yes? It takes practice. It takes falling down on your blessed assurance more than one time. <laughs> I'm sure that it takes, uh, um, I'm sure that maybe you get punched sometimes too, in, uh, not on purpose. But it, you know, it, it might hurt. It might hurt. There's struggle involved. There's practice involved. And it takes work. Eventually, the karate kid gets to the tournament. And of course, the sensei has given him this one. <laughs> <laughs> Special move to do. Careful, <laughs> And he did, he had been practicing it, and he did it. He did it, and he won the match fair and square. It took a lot of work, and just like the Karate Kid, the scripture reminds us that it takes a lot of work and dares us, dares us to figure out how to use and repair the model of repair instead of revenge. We are challenged to figure out how to move and use the moves that God has given us to repair instead of using revenge. So I was reading this week, there's, I don't know if you've ever read, uh, heard of the Social Gospel classic. It's a classic. It was, it was written by Charles Sheldon in 1800, 1896 to be exact. And it, the, it was called In His Steps. And, and I read this in seminary. And um, I remember the, back in high school, though, some 40 years ago, uh, that's a long time ago, First hearing the phrase that he said, uh, what would Jesus do? And this, this whole movement, you know, Tony Campello borrowed this what would Jesus do phrase for his movement. And, of course, they, they kind of go hand in hand. But I wonder, I wonder if I could just take a liberty and, and say, what would mom want us to do? What would mom want us to do? Mom would probably want what Jesus wants. But it makes it more personal because you see, sometimes, well, we all answer to our mothers. <laughs> no matter how old you are, you still answer to your mother. So what would, it, what would our mothers want us to do? Of course, our mothers want what's best for us. But Jesus is our example, and I don't know about you, but I can still hear my mother say, do good to others. Do the good unto others, as you would want them to do unto you. And I thought that's a bunch of haloni. <laughs> I know that many of my inspirations have been passed down from my parents, like good advice, good nurturing, faithfulness in times of struggle. But because we are here, we also are able to use and apply the Word of God to lead us and to teach us and to encourage us. We all need that. And at some point, in our lives, we're, we're all going to struggle with something. Now, how many of you like to suffer? Well, now I know I, some of you like to suffer, whether you like to admit it or not. <laughs> because the, there is a victim mentality. There are no victims in here. I want to just say, we need to get over that. Get over it. Get over being a victim. <clears throat> because life happens to everybody. And that's a mother thing. My, I can hear my mom. Life happens to everybody. You can choose how you react to it. You can choose. You get to choose today. I believe that God knows our pain. God knows your pain, what you go through. 
and you have and you have struggles and the thing is that God tries to show us how to get along with it and how to use the pain to, be, to make us better um, to make us stronger and to help us to be faithful people no no pain no pain. Some of you got no pain. No pain. Sometimes we stop short. Amen. Sometimes we stop short, and instead of using the pain to teach us, we grumble and we complain about it, and we don't use it, and we keep grumbling about it and stumbling over it. But I'm telling you, saints, if you're in pain today, God knows. God knows the pain that you face. God knows the struggle that you face, and you can overcome it. Find yourself a mom who will encourage you. Maybe it's somebody sitting in this room right here. Somebody will help you. The mom figures of our lives will help you to overcome. Tap into the word of God, and Jesus will help you overcome it. I want to, want to just encourage us this morning. To remember, revenge is not the answer. You get a lot more done when you strive to repair relationships instead of seeking revenge. Let us pray. God, through Jesus, Jesus endured the pain while suffering unjustly. With this all adds up to an observation that if you want to know where God is, look to the cross. God is always present in the pain. God is always present in our suffering. God knows our desperate need for the divine presence in the best and the very worst of times. <laughs> What would you have us to do in this day? Help us to seek and repair instead of revenge. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you this morning.